Enigma in the house. My man Jay Span, Titan Studios. It's called From the Heart. Keeping it real is what all the song's about. Never selling your soul. Always staying true to yourself. Alright, ah, uh, yeah. Check it out. Money, money, cars. What would never get you far unless you're gonna spit it from the heart. Yeah, money, money, cars. What would never get you far unless you're gonna spit it from the start. Man, money, money, cars. What would never get you far unless you're gonna spit it from the heart. Yeah, money, money, cars. What would never get you far unless you're gonna spit it from the start. Man. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to your favorite. Weekly sports show. That's right. It is IT Suits, ITC Sports Ball. Ooh, I'm gonna screw myself up there right away. But I am the man Jerome Spann. And of course, we've got the regular sports ball crew with you, but we've also got the originator of this whole ITC thing. Let's get right to the introductions. Of course, we've got that man. He comes in the building, and the ladies is like, Ooh, we pop pop. I'm so glad to see you. Here's that man. Pop pop camp. I hate you so much right now. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Uh, and I am Core Seven, your man, Jerome Spann, you know, pretty face on ITC. Don't you forget it, baby. Liar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, y'all can say it's lying, but the ladies love me. So it's all good. But the lady loved you. Your <laughs> wife loved you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling the secrets. <laughs> but of course, we've got that hot take spit of the man who rips like die line spits every time that he comes in the building. The ladies is like, oh, he is that man. You know, it's your boy Mace ready to go. And of course, we've got ITC's resident troll. He is that dude that sees a fire and says, I got that gasoline and gunpowder for you, baby. He is that man, Daryl. I am not a fire starter. I'm a, I'm a fire individual. That's all about. <laughs> oh, somebody come get this man. Somebody, somebody come get him. But. I'm sure some of you that are watching us here on YouTube, we appreciate y'all. By the way, make sure you like, subscribe, hit all the notification bells so every time we drop a new episode, you are notified. Make sure you do that. But thank you for watching us. But I'm sure some of you are like, whoa, these guys are all in college shirts. What's going on? Well, hey, you get a nice special edition episode. It's going to be split in two spaces, though. We're dropping the first one this week, which will be, you guys will all be seeing this on Sunday, the 25th, Christmas. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, you like that. We'll give you a Christmas episode. But... You will also be getting the ITC awards next week, which will be dropping on the 30th. So make sure you have those notification bells set so you get notified when that hot content drops for you. But we have to get right into things right away. And we have to start with one of the monumental moments of the past few weeks since we've been off. We do apologize. So that we, I know you guys have missed us. Y'all been crying. Oh, when y'all coming back? Man, we got a life too, dog. I told y'all. We don't get paid for this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, put some, Not yet. Slide some duckets in my pocket. I got you. <laughs> but regardless, we are back. And of course, we have to start with that insane, insane comeback by the Minnesota Vikings last week. Mace, I got to ask you, man. I know personally when I was watching the game, I said it was dead in the water at halftime. How do you have to feel right now if you are Matt Ryan when now not only do you have the one of the most monumental comebacks ever in the regular season on you, you also have it in the Super Bowl? Hey man, I'm pretty sure at this point he is. Uh, his wife is already checking vacation destinations. Um, just be real with you, man. You can't, you you can't come back from something like that. And um, I think now it's time for I, all those people that were like, give Jeff Saturday a chance. Uh, I mean, it's it's crickets out there now. What kind of chance does he need? Uh, he beat the Raiders, which is, I mean, cool. And they've been on a losing streak since. And they've changed quarterbacks Ooh, like every week. <laughs> they, I think, I think they had Nick Foles starting at one point. I, I mean, I don't understand that. that but that, that, that game was terrible. 
kudos to the Vikings for not giving up because that's a that could have been a Kurt special right there. And uh, look, I I don't know. I rock with Jeff Saturday, dog. But my boy, you you better never get nothing beyond interim on your head coach right now, because boy, how y'all just y'all turned all the way up to just spread the cheeks and said, here you go. You, you didn't even you didn't even try and put up a fight. Y'all just spread them out and say, here you go, baby. It's embarrassing. It's absolutely embarrassing. Daryl, do you think this man just Saturday actually even show his face on the NFL sideline anymore? As long as he ain't paid to show his face, he should be doing it. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. No. Get him out of there. Hey, hey, hey. Who cares about embarrassment when you're getting paid? That's all I'm going to say. Oh, so so he, yeah. Oh, so you you saying that you got a well? You know what? I ain't gonna lie to you. I probably got a price. Hey, for hey, that. It's, it's different. It's like falling off a bike and you fall you fall off and there's a crowd seeing you versus hey, I I have this embarrassing moment, but I'm still getting paid for it. I think I'll take the embarrassment and get paid. Oh, so you trying to hit him with the Chappelle line that he told the crowd in Detroit? I can pay for the attempt, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, so, so you you can need huh, Daryl? That's what you're saying. You you can pay for the attempt. That's it. You know you care about the result. Man, I'm riding through for rings of fire, and I'm getting paid <laughs> for it. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> tell you right now, as long as I'm getting paid, shit. It is what it is. Now, T, is it time for Matt Ryan to hang him up? Yes. I mean, like I say, the the guy, the guy was always one of those elite level quarterbacks. But it, it, it for the past couple of seasons, I mean, I don't see it anymore. I don't see the guy that you know took the Falcons that helped take the Falcons to the Super Bowl. That guy that we're just like, ooh, this this guy's kind of cold bloody. I don't see him anymore. And we got to make the, you know, it's time for him to just say screw it. I mean, not like you walking around here with six Super Bowl rings like other people. You want to know? You want to know where that? You want to know where that guy went? He went to San Francisco to a head coaching job. That's where he went. <laughs> That's where that guy went. That guy's a head coach now. <laughs> That's that's where that guy went. He he's a head coach now. Hard to argue against that. Yeah. I mean, look, we've seen the results. He he didn't made Jimmy, he didn't made people who know football get tricked into believing in the Jimmy G. Okay, <laughs> think about that for a second. We all know what Jimmy G is, right? And he had people out here been like, "Well, hey, Jimmy G is a winner. We, he's our kind of guy. You know, we need him." No, no, you do not. Jimmy G is the definition of average. Okay. Well, actually, you know what, Mace? He might be like below average because Kirk is really the definition of average, right? He's like the Mendoza line, where it's like if you got a quarterback that's worse than Kirk Cousins, you ain't winning. You need you need to be in the lottery trying to get you a quarter. You need to be in the tank. If your quarterback, if your quarterback ain't above Kirk Cousins, you need to be in the tank trying to draft one. All right, all right, all right. you know, what? let's do it. Let's do it, Mace. All right. If we had to right now, who are the quarterbacks that you are saying are below Kirk Cousins? They below the line where it's like it's time for you the, to go to the, the, the Kirk line. <laughs> the Kirk line. Okay, so obviously we got. Um, you know, uh, man. Start with the number one dude I know are you already thinking about. Just go on and say his name, bro. Go on ahead and say it, because I know you want to. Um, man, you know. I got to start with Zach Wilson. Just say <laughs> uh, I got to start. Uh, hey. Hey, that's not a bad choice. <laughs> I got to start there. Mac Jones. But could, wait, can we technically say Zach Wilson? Because, like. If Mike White was wasn't hurt, wouldn't he probably be starting right now? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So both New York quarterbacks, let's just get it right out there. Cause I thought you was going Daniel Jones number one for sure. I thought for sure you were gonna go with Mr. White Vic, as they want to call him. You'll get this mother oh, out of my God, face. oh dimes, <laughs> dimes out there, bro. Uh Russell Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 
That's Darryl, top of the list. That's top of the list. Top of the list. <laughs> All right, what you got? Uh old old long neck down there in Houston. Uh oh, so Daryl, Daryl, right, right. Let me get this right. So you saying the Mike Singletary with Russell Wilson can't win with him. <laughs> <laughs> That guy is a joke. I don't, you know. Hey, man. Um, as long as we're in mid Call of Duty cycle, I'm going Kyler Murray. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just be real with you, uh, Carson Wentz. Uh, <laughs> um, hey, look, Heineke, you on that list too, yeah, buddy? Heineke, there too. <laughs> you on that list? The only difference between Heineke and Wentz is that they actually like. Heineke in in Washington. That that's it, <laughs> bro. And you know what the crazy part is? There, it's not like there's been a whole bunch of stuff that's been reported about Carson Wentz, where it's like, oh, you know, he's a crappy teammate. He does this, does that, da da da. He's a prima donna, whatever they want to say, right? For the most part, what what they say is he's a good teammate. They and you know, he's the Bible dude, the Bible study yeah. dude on the team. You know, usually everybody rock with the Bible study dude on the team, base, right? And they hate his guts. They absolutely hate his guts. <laughs> <laughs> <Get it. laughs> like, like for real, they'd be like, nah, dog, I ain't praying with you. Uh-uh. Jesus can't to forgive me. <laughs> oh, but yeah, all right. So, all right. So we got that's what six, seven quarterbacks already. We got on the list. Who else? Who else doesn't meet the Kirk Cousins line of, of mediocrity? <laughs> okay. I think, bro. I I think Jared Goff is like trying to break through the Kirk line. He's trying to get there. <laughs> I personally think him and Kirk are like they're Spider Man meme. They looking at each other, dog. <laughs> 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 like, for real. Uh, let me see who else is there. Uh, Oh yeah, like I said, David Davis Mills, David Mills, he's there. Uh, Mister Too Much Neck himself, Neckatron. Right, what about Tannehill? What about Tannehill? Yeah, yeah, but but I can't say that his team should be in the in the quarterback sweepstakes though because they drafted one this year. So hey, but we see yeah. him play also, and I'm gonna tell you something. I'm not one to just throw him away at this point. Oh, excuse me, but good lord. Malik Willis looked sorry, bro. That man looked like ooh, he looked like he might even not, not even be a third string quarterback. I mean, I mean, you got there. what Mariota isn't he hurt? So we, yeah, Mariota throw him out. Yeah, man, Mary, we man, Marcus Mariota is gonna forever be stealing money in the NFL because there's always gonna be somebody that can be like, I can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like for real, man. Like it's legitimate. There's always gonna be some coach because he's another one, right? Where they say he a good dude, come in, work hard all the time. He's humble, all that stuff. So he gonna always be able to keep stealing checks. But for me, Mace, I think you missed one of the ones that I think people may try and argue me down, but they know it's the truth when they actually watch the film. Can you guess who it is? Who hit me with it? Uncle Creepy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know what people expected from him. He hasn't played in two years. Did you, what did y'all expect? Greatness. <laughs> <laughs> so, T, do you have any quarterback that you would put below the Kirk Cousins line? Did we miss anybody in your mind? Did you have someone come up where you were like, you forgot about this guy. Nah, because, I mean, I think y'all hit the nail on the head, especially with Jared Goff ass. I mean, God. <laughs> I mean, he's close, bro, because, I mean, the, the Lions offense hasn't been but, bad, but, I mean, their defense. But come, on. Mm-hmm. but come on, man. Like, guy, the guy hasn't really shown. Think about it, that man spent all that time out in L.A. And then, let's say, he, he gets traded to Detroit. Freaking, he... Man, he is a shell of his former self. Like man, he man, tries. man, look, now hold on, time out, dog. It's not his fault that Sean McVay was out there trying to play real life Madden with his quarterback. You know what I'm saying? That's not his fault. That's not his fault. That man didn't even get the chance to get developed, right? Because his, his damn coach is in his head and said all the way up to the 50 seconds. Hey, hey, look, you you better not throw it to this guy. Throw it to this guy. He's gonna be open. Trust me, he's open. He playing Madden. That's what speaking he doing. speaking of McVeigh here real quick um what 
What do we make of the Rams' meltdown this season? They they've got uh, no real way to get better in the near future. Hey, dog. They pretty much had to throw the Brinks truck at Aaron Donald to get him to come back. This is very easy for me. The Rams are the example and of what of what can happen when you sell everything to try and win a Super Bowl. You may possibly get it, but after that Super Bowl, if you don't get it, if you don't get that one early, and you have to get it later, which is what they did, you're gonna have nothing left in the cupboards afterwards. You look, <laughs> the craziest part of the Rams is right. If we look at just positionally, they have two guys who Easily argued are top one or two at their position, right? No questions asked. Well, three, because I mean, Cooper Cup on offense as well. But yeah, there you go. But, so they have but, three guys that are like probably top, easily arguably top three at their position. But then when you start looking everywhere else, it's like, <laughs> oh no, do y'all even have any starters? Like, Mace, can you tell me a player outside of Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, Cooper Cup? That you, that you would say, if you're a team that's looking to get better, you want to add one of these guys. Can you find one on there? Because I cannot literally think of any other player on that roster that I would want. <laughs> Maybe, uh, what's the tight end, Higby? He's solid. Man, I'm straight. He, he going to want a bunch of money. T, can you think of any player on the Rams that you would be like, Hey, the Bears, they say this guy was going to be a free agent. The Bears could use him to help make the team better next year. Outside of them three guys, is there anyone on that roster that you know? No. <laughs> That's all I got to say is just no. I can't say anything else because, like, those are the three people who, who, if I was a GM, I would make a play to get. You know, like I say, I wouldn't try to get all three of them because, goddamn, you're gonna have to back up the bank. <laughs> but, but you're, you're you're looking at in terms of just talent. Like you say, if your defense needs help, you're gonna get Donald. You know, let's say you need a receiver. There you go with Cooper. Let's say once again, defense, Jalen Ramsey. Like those are the. Three people you, I don't. I don't really think Jalen Ramsey has a market anymore. I mean, he may have aged out, like you say. That's no, the, not not necessarily aged out. I mean, if you look at Jalen Ramsey's play this year, it don't look elite. Like I said, I'm, I'm. You don't challenge him with every receiver you got on the team, but he's making he's making that he don't get help money, and he is losing consistently. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not wrong there. You can't, you can't make the, we can't, you can't make the set and forget money and and lose. So I mean, what what is the what really is the market for Jalen Ramsey at this point? Because you can't, you can't comp out like. And I, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get your returns back for getting Jalen Ramsey right now. And I know some people would say some teams could use Matthew Stafford, but I'm gonna tell y'all a secret. Matthew Stafford is below that Kirk Cousins line. Because tell me, what, what happened this year, right? When, when, when it was saying, Matthew, we need to raise your level of play up because the talent's a little worse. He looked a lot like Detroit Lions' Matthew Stafford again. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, hey, I've seen this guy before. Look, as a Bears fan, boy. We used to love playing Stafford because you knew he was going to throw you some. Like, you knew that at some point he was going to – like I was talking about with, uh, earlier today with uh, Josh Allen, Mace. He just going to YOLO it sometimes. <laughs> YOLO! Luckily, luckily, he's got two guys that can go up and get it. But, I mean, <laughs> hey, hey, he, he's – he. <laughs> Diggs, Gabriel, one of y'all boys down there, make it happen, baby. <laughs> hey, look, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm mad at them for it, right? Because the NFL with some of these receivers now, that is part of what you need to do. Which is like, hey, dog, I know he down there somewhere, and he gonna make a play on this ball for me, right? Especially when you got a certified dog like that. But uh, Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup ain't that type of dude. 
No. He ain't just a oh he's down there somewhere. No, Cooper Cup is like he done broke somebody off on his route somewhere underneath it. Hopefully I can find him and throw the ball to him, right? <laughs> That's who Cooper is. It, the craziest part is he gonna catch it and then break you off for a whole bunch of yak. But he's not, oh, I'm busting you over the head all day. That's not what he does. No, no. So for me, <clears throat> I look at Matthew Stafford and I also say he is below that Kirk Cousins line. Now, Mace, you brought up one, the one team I actually wanted to, to uh, pivot to here, which is the Cardinals. What do they do from here, Mace? This entire thing has went exactly how we said it was going to. The minute they gave him that cliff and all these boys that extension, we knew it was going to go this way. We told y'all this season was going to be an absolute poop show for them. And what has it been? An absolute poop show. Mace. How do they fix that at this point? Kingsbury is out. You can't trade the quarterback. He make too much money. So it's got to be Kingsbury. He's out. He's out. He's out. He's out. There's no other way around it. Kingsbury is out the door. I'm I'm but, I'm liable to some of that. Some of that defensive talent is probably going to be out the door too because they're going to be scrambling to get Kyler Murray some more weapons. So. Oh, and you mean some more resources that supposedly Cliff Kingsbury we, didn't I mean, have? To work we told with? we told you Hollywood wasn't wasn't worth a nothing, and they gave up a first for him. In the words of a legendary black man named Mace, Hollywood Brown ain't worth two squirrel farts. Okay, that's <laughs> it. All right, let, let's be for real. He ain't. They, you got Holly DeAndre Hopkins right, and you have Kyler Murray, but somehow. Your offense is this? Your team is this? How? Buddha Baker out there fighting for his life on defense. All 5'10", 190-some pounds of them out there trying to put the whole defense on his back right now. And that's a that's a travesty. And if I'm him, you got to get me out of there. You're going to have to franchise tag me because I ain't signing nothing. <laughs> and you don't I have to, because I, I am you. signing nothing. You're gonna have to if tag I'm, me. I'm Buddha Baker. I didn't already told the GMA dog. You're gonna have to I tag me because I'm trying to get out. I ain't staying. I'm gone. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't blame him though. That's a guy who you can say, arguably say they are wasting his talent. You know what it reminds me of a lot, Mace? You remember when McCourty was in Tennessee for all those years, and it was like, yo, this, this nigga is so good, and they just <laughs> waste his talent. They just waste it all away. Like, what is this? And then he go to the Patriots, and all of a sudden this man got rings now. It's like, okay, all right. He, he making all pro teams, pro mm -hmm. bowls and stuff. Pro like bowl, that. all pros. He's It's crazy. It's crazy, but – so let me ask you this, Mace. Who do all right? Let me ask you. This is more so the question. Do you think they need to hire the GM first or the head coach first? If they don't hire the GM first, they're gonna be in the same situation they in right now. Because you can't get somebody in here who just wants to pat Kyler on the on the back and be like, hey, come. It's all right, bro. We know Call of Duty came out. Just, just do your best. No, you get you got to get the GM first. Somebody whose job is on the line if team don't do well, and get him to assess your roster and figure out what type of coach do we need in here because Kingsbury ain't it. Go back to college, player. The craziest part is, is that. He'll get fired from that job, and then some college team is totally going to pay him way more than he should get paid, and they're going to fall for the trap just like, what was it, Texas Tech did? Mazer <laughs> like, oh, yeah, Cliff, he, he's got it, man. He's got it. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Mm -mm. He don't know what he's doing. So I don't know, man. My opinion, Mace, fire the GM, fire the coach, and tell Kyler Murray, we getting getting you a real head coach, and yet and you're sorry behind. Better listen to him because you was cheeks this year because you was telling the head coach, "I know what I'm doing. This is my offense. Listen to me." Blah 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 blah. Yelling at him, DeAndre Hopkins, everybody on the sideline. It was everybody's fault. 
but Kyler Murray's fault this year. So you tell that man, hey, dog, we're about to get you a real head coach that's going to hold you accountable because what you're doing out here, it ain't happening. If you don't get right this year, we're going to ship you out. Mm-hmm. We'll, eat, we, hey, we'll eat that cap. It is what it is. You, Some, you eat it. You somebody eat it. somebody wants you. Somebody going to send you send us that Deshaun package. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> Please somebody go ahead and get that Deshaun Watson package and go and keep it moving. That's all. That's it. But, somebody going to get that package away. They're like, Kyler Murray is who we need. We here. <laughs> but we are approaching the end of the season here, so we have to talk about what is going to more than likely happen in these playoffs. Mace, how are you feeling about your pick to go to the Super Bowl out of both the AFC and the NFC? After, what are we at, week 16 now, 17? Uh, said- well, did not I, – I- NFC, I picked the Rams to come out of there, right? Well, we can we can go ahead and <laughs> um let, let me double check for you. I'm pretty sure I did. He might have got drunk and done that. I, I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> no, actually, you picked the 49ers. Oh, I did? You picked the 49ers. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. You, you picked Bills 49ers. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Those, 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 I feel I'm I'm feel I still feel strong about those. I mean. The Even 49ers? The you you so you done fail for the party trick? You done fail? No, 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 no. I haven't. Um, for whatever reason, Shanahan can make it work with whoever's back there, and that defense is a top notch, and nobody wants to play them in the playoffs. I'm I'm just saying it right now. So what Mace is basically saying is that he believes Brock Purdy's the next time Brady. <laughs> Hey man, don't hey, don't be don't be selling me like that. But I still got. I, hey man, I'm I'm still. I still think the Bills is is. is I, I, hey, hey. I mean, I I don't I don't have a pr- issue still p- still sticking with them as my pick. In at the least, NFC. at least you didn't pick the Bucks to come out of the NFC like somebody else. Um, <laughs> I don't know who who that might have been. You know, there might have been this guy named Daryl who decided to say the Bucks was coming out this year, even though I told you that Tom Brady was watched. So, Daryl, how you feeling about your picks? <laughs> you know what? You can say whatever you want. I, I live in my truth. How about that? <laughs> how you feel about that? I, um, I live in my truth. Gross. So, T, at this point in the season, who do you feel like is going to end up in the Super Bowl? I, I, If I had to go with anybody, then coming out of the AFC, I mean, can anybody really deny them the Bills? Um, And then the NFC, I mean, I, I got to go. I'm, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with a a, a team that is, is gonna pay me to say it, but they've been playing out of their mind this year. But you know, like I say, and granted, a lot of people would probably wouldn't pick them, but I'm gonna go Vikings. You trust Kirk Cousins? No, I trust the the rest of the Vikings who have been carrying Kurt's ass all year. That's but Kurt can still throw that ball though. And every time the lights come on, T, it goes bad for Kirk now. Hey, just don't let him play on Monday night. I'm just saying. But it's the playoffs. He's going to have all the eyes on him. If they get in the playoffs, everybody watches all the games. True. But I just, I don't know. Just something feels different about them this year. Something feels different. I, I, I can't I can't place my finger on it, but something feels different about them. And you know what? We'll, we'll have to see because. They could they could make a run. I think they could make a run. Like if 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 not them, then you know the obvious next choice would probably be the Eagles. Okay. Well, I still feel relatively good about my picks. I picked the Ravens and the 49ers. But to answer your question, T, when you asked who could stop the Buffalo Bills in the AFC, let me tell you something, sir. We always bet. Oh, black around here. Oh, uh, here we go Holmes. again. Oh. When they run into Patrick Mahomes again in the playoffs, their ass is about to go sit right at home one more again, head down, popping on the handstand. Woo! 
we always bet on black, but let's say Patrick Mahomes is a little bit more high yellow. So I don't know what we're talking about there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, Sir, I mean, let's say we always bet on black with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Listen, this ain't Wesley Snipes and Passenger 57, okay? We talking about football. We ain't talking about a movie. We talking about yes. football. So you always bet on black. Patrick Mahomes. For the dub. Woo! I think Jerome got into my Ric Flair drip. That's why I think. That's why he's won so much. I the only like. regret I have is not picking the Chiefs to go back to the dang Super Bowl because I actually feel like they about to be back in the Super Bowl again this year. So what? I was betting no black. Patty Mahomes, that's that's the GOAT. Patty Mahomes is the GOAT. Sure. Whatever you say. He is the GOAT. And this is the part of the show that we pause. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I just need to make sure that y'all understood that he was the GOAT. Mm -hmm. And this is about the time of during the show where everybody just, you know, opens up another tab, starts watching people doing the Wednesday Wednesday dance from the Netflix show Wednesday. Like I said, we just need to see that. Let's do it. You know, let's say that's what happens. You know, come come back about two minutes. Jerome's gonna be off his soapbox. Mm -mm. Well, I also do just want to run through some other these some other of these picks that we had, like um, you know, me telling Daryl and Mace that the Eagles were gonna be the best team in the NFC East. And and uh hey Daryl, how's that played out? Not the best. They didn't win the Super Bowl yet, did they? I don't but, think so. Who's leading the division? Who's the number one seed in the NFC right now? Just remind hey. me. Hey, remember, remember the Patriots won every single game and lost at the Super Bowl. Remember that. Hey, just remind me, who did you say was going to win the East? Oh, that's right. You said the Commanders. <laughs> I don't. I don't recall me saying that, sir. Your two, you picked two teams to come out of the playoffs in the East, and that is the Eagles and that you picked the Commanders and the Giants. I picked the Eagles, Cowboys. Mace picked the Cowboys and the Eagles. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I, don't recall, I don't recall this. Oh, you don't recall? Oh, okay. Convenience. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. All mm -hmm. right. But I will say this, though. We all embarrassed ourselves with the uh, with the NFC South because we all acted like the Bucks was going to be a, like a so much better of a team than everybody else in the division, and they have been boo-boo. Okay? <laughs> Terrible. Terrell, you need to get your man's Tom Brady. You, that's you and Daryl's man's Tom Brady. That's fine. Still Tom Brady. Well, well you, you, need to, you need to still tell Mike Evans to stop punching the cornerback, that damn it. <laughs> he can't okay. help himself. Marcus Lattimore he, just get he under from his skin. The, he's from the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Lattimore just gets under his skin so bad. I don't know. He's from the streets. Mace, do you think like Lattimore like cut his sister or something, and then like he he be talking <laughs> greasy to him about it Had on the field? To. Had to. <laughs> like you, I mean, he got to know something personal about dude for for him to, <laughs> to be ready to box this man every time they see each other on the field. I I feel like he's one incompletion away from squaring up every time they every time they play. He's one incompletion from squaring up with like, like, bro, if we go down by 10, I'm going to just square up and lead the game. <laughs> I'm going to just knock this man out real quick. <laughs> oh, God, it's so bad. <clears throat> but to, get, to kind of continue recapping some of these picks here, um, me and Mace were both wrong with picking the Rams to be any semblance of a team. Like, I picked the Niners to win, but I picked the Rams to be a second playoff team. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Mace did the inverse there, and it's like, yeah, he was wrong too. And then Daryl, who Daryl was way off. My man had the Rams be in the first place and the Cardinals be in second. Woo! Daryl, we told you Call of Duty was coming out and it was a bad idea to do this, but you was like, nah, 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 nah. I'm like, I got it. I got it. We told you. Like if, we told if you. the Cardinals don't build up 
a lead before November, just assume that they're going to be trash for the remainder of the season. And, and well, you know, Kyler ain't sleeping nothing but maybe like three hours a night. Baby, he got to make sure he prestige once all the way through and then get a second account and then he got to do it again on that one, dog. Don't you know Kyler got hey, stuff to do? Hey, hey, FaZe Kyler is in full effect right now. <laughs> hey, T, have you ever have you ever heard the, the this is a true stat? As Kyler Murray's KD in, in Call of Duty goes up, his play goes down in the it, NFL. Listen, his completion percentage in QBR goes down as his as his uh, KD in Call of Duty goes up. It's real. It's a real thing. It's the wildest stat I've ever seen in my life. It's the wildest stat I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> I, how do you how do you explain that? How do you explain that to your to your teammates and your coach? As you get better at Call of Duty, you get worse at your job. <laughs> see what had happened was, let's see the new. I, I, the, I, the, imagine the new expansion pack came out, and well, I just had to get it. And you know what? Let's say I just was playing with the guys, and oh, I lost track of time. And see, that's what had happened. And uh, I promise, next game it'll be better. <laughs> like that's imagine, imagine like. being an Olympic athlete, and from. November till about February, you ain't worth nothing. <laughs> My, like, yep. at, at, like you got all these sponsors and deals saying you got to run and you just out there coming in last place. You know what I'm saying? Then you build yourself back up spring, summertime, just to repeat the cycle every year. Like what? That you know what you know what they need to do. <clears throat> they need to let Kyler Murray get. His sponsorship from Call of Duty, and <laughs> and it's based on his play. That would be the worst thing that to ever happen in that man's life. Thing. It's based on his play. Based dog, on his play. Dog. He, he got a sponsor- there trying to tell them, "Let me mocap." <laughs> okay. All right. He, hey, he would want. Hey, he would want. He would want a skin. He would want a skin in his Cardinals jersey for Call of Duty, bro. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, hey, you know how they put Messi, Pogba, and Neymar in there? They be like, Kyler be like, no, 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 I'm gonna do all my mo capping. Don't worry about it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that would be a terrible thing to happen to Kyler Murray. Okay, that would look. His life is already messed up enough when a new Call of Duty come out. Don't have him actually being able to get involved with the process of making one. Oh my God, he'll never sleep. Okay. Kyler Murray would be in there on bang for life. He would just be <laughs> all day. <laughs> like, hey, that boy would be out there in them smelling sauce mid game. You know? <laughs> I gotta wake up. <clears throat> hey, hey, you hear y'all John see that? Hey. He had an all time day in the use of smelling sauce today. <laughs> hey, that boy. Up there. <laughs> I can see the air. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Looks brisk. Let's go, guys. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Oh, goodness gracious, goodness gracious. Okay, okay. But we got we to keep it moving on to some of our picks here. Um, wow. Mace, you were the only one that actually had any sense in the AFC East. You picked Bills and Dolphins. As your two teams, I picked Bills and Pats, and so did Daryl. And God, do I regret it so much. Oh, <laughs> I regret it so much. The Patriots have been so bad. My belief in Bill Belichick got me, dog. It, it got me. Like, I should have just said, no, they're going to punt on this season. They hire, they hire Sweaty. See, you know what it is, Mace? I should have known better. As soon as Sweaty Sox Patricia was back there, I should have known. <laughs> no, dog, don't pick them this year. Sweaty Sox is in charge. <laughs> don't do that. Do not do that. They, I, I didn't listen to myself, though. I, I didn't follow my own rules. Listen, Belichick got all those coaches on this afternoon. Ain't now one of them know nothing about offense. Not a single one. <laughs> Not a single one. Uh, yeah, they're having to win games ten to three because can't nothing happen on offense. Like, yeah, not a not a single coach on that staff is has an offense. I'm pretty sure they got nothing. He got nothing but linebacker coaches coaching the whole offense. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, have you ever had that one coach that don't know nothing about the position that he coaching? He just tell you to go out there and do it. Yeah. 
That's that that's them right now. Just hey bro, get out there. We'll figure it. <laughs> Throw the ball. So now we gotta talk about the division <laughs> that we all pooped the bed here. The AFC South. Myself and Mace picked the Colts to win the division. Uh Mace, you picked the Jags as your second place team. I picked the Titans. So I should have picked the Titans to win. I'm stupid for believing in in, in Matt Ryan. I should have known better. Okay. And but Daryl, he also pooped the bed too. He had Texans and Colts. So it looks like we don't know anything about the AFC South on this show, okay? So I'm just telling y'all people, when you hear us talk about the AFC South, y'all better respond right back in them comments. You know y'all niggas don't know nothing about the AFC South. Y'all all picked the worst teams ever. <laughs> like, you, you got to hit us. You got to hit us. But that's one, you know, that's one division. But <sighs> here we go, though, Mace. Here we go. AFC West. <laughs> Who did you pick to win, Mace? Do you remember? Listen, man. <laughs> I've, I've gotten over this. I've healed. I've went through the whole. The, what what is the five steps of grieving? <laughs> I've I've already been through that. So you can't you can't bring me down you about see. picking the Raiders. You can't you can't bring me down. No, I can say it. I can comfortably say it now. <laughs> I am at that. I am at that level in my healing process that I can say it. The Raiders see, stink. This man picked. This man picked the Raiders, dog, to win the division over Patrick Mahomes. Just, just remember that. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't a, that wasn't a good pick. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Listen, dog. I can't be responsible for all my actions. All I know is I picked the Raiders, oh, and it and it has ba- it has backfired on me. If you can't be responsible, then who is? Let's see. Say, were you drinking too many bags that day? Just had had a sugar high or something? What's going maybe, on? Maybe I maybe I didn't have a bang for that one. Maybe I wasn't I wasn't fully aware of the of of, of my surroundings. You had a bang. You, I did. You, was, you you just you got drunk on that Raiders. You was like you was like <gasps> you. Hey man, you know I just. Hey, man, it just... But while I'm over here knocking you. Daryl picked the Raiders to be in second place, and I showed picked them to be a third playoff team. So we was all drunk on the Raiders. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, we were like, hey, it's gonna be three teams out of the AFC West <laughs> making play. Hey, man. Hey, look, I picked the Chargers in my second place team, and we see these dudes up and down. It's like a roller coaster with that's them. A, like, that's oh, another oh, coach. Oh. That's another coach who's who should be out the door. Hey, look, I was all for his aggressiveness, but I've seen now this man doesn't really seem like he knows how to manage games very well. Mm-hmm. And an important part of being an NFL coach is knowing how to manage the game. And he don't know how to do that for nothing. So, yeah. So people have your laughs at us for our picks. We, you know, we, we know what we did here. But I'll forever take, I'll take that Raiders lump, but <laughs> never again. <laughs> but now. <clears throat> We have to get into everybody's favorite show of the year. It is the ITC Awards. Yeah. Cue the awards music. Cue the (laughs) awards music.
America. <laughs> hey, don't go nowhere. Make sure you hit that subscribe down at the bottom. Make sure you hit the like. Make sure you share us. We only grow with you guys. That's it. That's all I'm here for. Came to harass you. Like I said, hit the and subscribe, people. Hit the and subscribe. I'm looking at you. You, you see me right in the eyes. I'm waiting for you to do it.